Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today I have another mead um, test I want to run. So one thing, and a comment I saw a little while back was, uh, somebody wanted to know what would happen if you didn't mix your honey and your must, like would the yeast still ferment? Um, so like, what would happen if you just kind of left your honey at the bottom? What I'm gonna test is exactly that today. Uh, I'm gonna be using the exact same recipe for basically two different meads. So I've got two mason jars here. These are half gallons. And um, I have, I've drilled the holes in the lids, put some grommets in. So I'll be using airlocks, all that stuff. But what I'm gonna take is the same recipe, about a pound and a half of honey that I have here in each one, um, a half a gallon of water. And then we're gonna mix that stuff up. Well, mix one of them up, I should say. Leave the other one at the bottom. I'll do a, a time lapse in this as well to show you kind of what the yeast do when the honey is not mixed in. Um, I'm really curious to see the results of this and I hope you're interested too. So we're gonna quickly make um, some must. I have my two scales here. My scales are gonna be using for measuring, of course, all of my um, honey and everything like that. We're gonna go ahead and pour our water in. We're using spring water and I'll make sure and put the recipe here too if you wanna know exactly what the recipe for these meats are. Uh, we're gonna fill this up to, let's say, um, five cups right now. Or pints, I should say, whatever it is. Uh, and then we're gonna put our honey in and then we'll subsequently add, the, uh, add more water if we need it. I'm using a smaller container because I didn't wanna do a giant test with this. Um, I just wanted to see what a small sampler of this is. And I think the time lapse would be cool because you guys will get to see ultimately um, how much the, uh, what the yeast do in reality. So this is three pounds of honey. I've already measured it out. And it's actually, um, oh, here we go. It is 3.2 pounds of honey um, because of the container. So uh, what I'm gonna do here, and this is easy because I can just, I have the same amount of water in each one. I'm just gonna pour Okay, so you can see here, I have um, matched these. It's a little honey on my hand. I have matched the uh, volumes of these two. So these two are exactly the same right now, currently. Uh, so I am going to now mix this one up, and I will not be mixing this one up. So uh, when we pitch our yeast, which I am going to basically dry pitch them straight on top here in a moment, um, we're going to just uh, you can rehydrate them. I'm not gonna rehydrate mine in this case. I think to make this as fair as possible, I'm not doing a couple things. I'm not adding yeast nutrient. I'm also not adding um, any energizer, anything like that, giving anything an unfair advantage. So I'm gonna mix this one up real fast and leave this one. And uh, yeah, I just sanitized everything too, so. Okay, so I've mixed this one up. That's our must currently. Um, I am going to go ahead, and I think these are still level. Yeah, these are still equal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some more water on top of this one here. We're gonna take it all the way to this top line, I see, yes. Same thing for this one. Oh no. I should have put more water in the first place. Try not to mix up any honey. There we go. All right, they are at the same level, same water level, same everything. Now, um, we're going to take, and I'm going to sprinkle the yeast on top of this. This is five grams of yeast. I'm gonna use two and a half grams um, for each one. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my, again, way to measure. Come on. Okay, so this, this whole packet is 6.1 grams. I'm gonna put in um, three. This is way, by the way, I don't need three grams of yeast for this small batch, but I'm going to do it anyways. It just helps the yeast multiply. Uh, you really only probably need, I think I'd need at max maybe one and a half grams for this small amount. Um, 4.5, we're almost there. 3.7. Perfect, that's three right there. We're gonna get the rest of it into here. 
All right, so you can already see um, the yeast in this one are, are falling down. Same thing for the non-mixed one so far. And uh, we're looking, we're gonna go ahead and take and, and put our airlocks on here in a second. We've got kind of a snow globe effect happening here. The yeast will rehydrate and then um, they will of course get going. I'm gonna try and move this one without jostling it too much because I really don't want to stir it. I want to keep this as true as possible. My predictions, frankly, before this even starts are that the yeast in the um, non-mixed one are probably just gonna chill there. I don't think that they're gonna eat the honey because the must is where I mean, everything's mixed in so they have their nutrients and things. But we'll find out. I'm gonna set up my, um, uh, my time lapse right here and you'll get to see the whole thing go. So uh, let me set that up. And then of course I'll be back after we see how these have uh, um, started fermenting. But before, before I do that, uh, I am gonna go ahead and take, I can't believe I forgot to do this. I'm gonna take a gravity reading of this one because I'm curious what this one, uh, both will be the same gravity ultimately, quote. All right, so the one that's mixed up, the gravity of it, which really the gravity of both of these would be if they were both mixed up, it looks like um, 1.110 1 we're looking at basically if this fermented out completely which it will using the lava and QA23 gets us up to about th uh, 13 to 14 percent this would take us to ooh yeah that'd be right at the cusp of it um, about 14 percent so we'll see if that actually ferments out that's the original gravity of this one if that one was mixed up it'd be that same gravity but We'll find out. So again, here's the time lapse. I'll be right back. Okay, so um, the test has been running for like 36 hours now. And I wanna note a couple and big things. I'm gonna move this closer so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But this, these have both been going in some form or fashion. And you can see here, um, like you can kind of see in this one, there is some bubbling going on. The big difference, of course, is with this being mixed, the yeast were able to pick up and go pretty quickly because the water, they're not like, having to chew through really solid food. Like it's it's been mixed in, <laughs> their food's been liquidated or liquid, whatever. Um, and this one, the problem is the yeast cannot get to the bottom, cannot chew the honey very well. Now there are some yeast chewing at the bottom um, and you can see some, some fermentation. Here's what I think is happening and I, I'm not really that surprised. I figured this was gonna happen that the honey would not really be able to be eaten by the, um, by the yeast because ultimately they need it to be a little bit easier to digest. And this is not easy for them to digest. This is obviously moving, this is moving like a traditional regular mead, not surprising at all. So I'm uh, content with that. But this right here is what's different. I'm not completely done with this experiment. Um, I think for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set these to the side and then uh, I'm gonna be done with the time-lapse thing because I had to set up a whole rig to do the time-lapse and I wanna be able to uh, continue to do things. So what I am gonna do though is let these, I'm just gonna set them up here, let them keep going, and then uh, I will be back with some more updates. But this is, tr this is fermenting normally. This is you know fermenting very, very slowly. I imagine that this will eventually hit a cap and not be able to ferment anymore, um, but we'll find out. Here's a little update on this. So uh, I think it's interesting. I think the honey level is going down because the yeast are actually feeding on the honey. It's just coming from the bottom. So you can see here, um, which is kind of interesting. So I'm gonna let it continue to go. I think eventually this might end up like a traditional mead, like this one right here, that's the other one. 
um, but we'll find out. Okay, I must say I'm very shocked. Look at how much honey this ye this mead has uh, consumed just by like the yeast eating off the top of it. Like that, it started up here, we're all the way down to there. It is almost done. I'm curious to see, um, one, color-wise, if they get closer, but two, if the tastes are very different. So it is fermenting. You can kind of see up top right there, just some small fermentation air bubbles. But we are currently, um, we're only seven days into fermentation, so this is interesting. Okay, so this is absolutely wild. Look how much honey's left in this one. There's literally just the bottom. These yeast have just gone crazy, and uh, they're still kind of fermenting. This is the regular one. This was the one that had, of course, the honey at the bottom. So it has fermented all the way through. I am seriously shocked. And you can see there is still some action, bubble in action. It is, uh, it's rocking and rolling. Okay, so quick update. Um, really kind of crazy. So this, we had both of them, um, and this was the one that had the honey just sitting at the bottom. You can tell that the honey is gone now. I mean, it's, that's pretty wild to me. So the honey dissolved over time because the yeast actually did eat it. So uh, I think the next half of this test is gonna, going to be to see if the fermentation is any, is any different or if it tastes any different. It is not done fermenting. So I'm taking a quick gravity reading here and it's still at, I mean, this is, I think just now with all of the, this one specifically that had the honey not mixed in, is only at 1.09. So it's still got, it's only like ate a little bit of the gravity. I think it's going to start fermenting more now. I'm gonna take a uh, gravity reading of the one that we mixed in the must roll and see that, see if it started fermenting faster, which we know it did. Okay, so here's the uh, mixed honey version that we did. It is definitely, Fermented more in that time, it is at 1.0575, almost 1.06. So the thing I'm noticing so far is that because we mixed the honey in this one, it was able to ferment faster. Therefore it is, you know, the sugars have been eaten up. More of these sugars have been eaten up. Will they get to the same end point? I think so, but we're gonna find out. So uh, we're not quite done with this test yet. This is about 11 days in, I believe. Uh, about, yeah, 11 days into this whole test. All right, it has been an entire month since we started fermenting with our honey mixing uh, test. And I have the samples here. I'll go ahead and tell you a couple things. First of all, both of these have completely fermented out. Now, there are a few things we need to note. Um, the one that we mixed the honey in, which was this one right here, of course started fermenting faster because the yeast could you know, the sugars were dissolved already. They didn't have to work very hard to chew on the sugars. So that one fermented more quickly. It finished probably about a week and a half ago. Um, now the one that we just put the honey in at the bottom and let the yeast eat, you know, more actively, took a while longer. It took probably until about three or four days ago to finish. That's kind of why you can see on here, the mixed honey version's more clear than the non-mixed honey right now. And that's because the yeast um, are more freshly done, so there's still some flocculation, meaning the, the uh, sediment has not settled and the yeast have not settled. So let's now find out the real question of, does you know not mixing your honey affect the flavor? Um, we saw, surprisingly, at least my surprise, that the yeast still ate the sugars, but I wonder if the, the uh, Flavors are different. So in this hand, I have the mixed honey version. This is the not mixed honey version. So I'm gonna start with the not mixed honey version. And I'm gonna smell them both, get you, give you some uh, things I smell about them. So they smell very similar. Um, I will say that the, the mixed honey version, like they both have floral notes, they both have, um, the traditional mead smell, which is like the honey characteristic that you get from a traditional mead. Um, but you get a little like sweeter quote smell to this one, to the mixed honey. You also get more of a fruity aroma, which is interesting. You get a very muted fruity aroma from this. So I don't necessarily know why that is. That's interesting. You'd figure because this one fermented slower, it would actually maybe preserve some more of the, um, 
character of the honey, but I don't know. Okay, yeah, they're very similar smelling. This is just more muted. It has less of a honey character smell. That seems like a weird series of words. Uh, let's taste it. Okay, I will say that's pretty good. Um, this is, of course, this is the, the not mixed honey. It is definitely has a little yeasty because it is kind of freshly done. So um, that's something I expected anyways. But you do get a really very pleasant um, honey character from this. And I think what I said a moment ago about it fermenting slower to like how that would preserve honey character, I think that's true. So this has a pretty nice um, smooth honey character. It's a little floral. Um, it has a little bit of that fruity note to it on the taste. That's a good mead. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's compare it to the mixed honey version. Okay, they taste very, very, very similar. Now, this seems like a silly thing, but they, they, they both have the same floral notes. Uh, this definitely doesn't have as much yeasty taste to it because it's more freshly done. The flocculation has, you know, kind of dropped. Um, but it definitely, they, they have the same amount of burn, so to speak. They're, of course, the same ABV, all that information, because you had the same amount of sugar content in it. Uh, I think the biggest difference is that, that you get a little bit more of a fruity note in this, and I'm wondering if the yeast from this, because they're fresh on there still, are kind of muting those, those fruity notes. So, yeah, this thing is really, I mean, they're very, very, very similar. So, ultimately, I would say that these are probably going to resolve and be the end up tasting the exact same way. When this the the yeast drop out of this, it will have that same taste. Um, they they taste almost identical. The there's a different thing happening on the nose. They smell a little different. I think that's also part of the yeast and just that. Um, so that was part of my big test is to see whether or not one the the sugar would still ferment, but two how does it taste? And I honestly expected some different tastes between the two. But obviously we didn't get that. We had a very, very similar taste, which is fine. And I'm actually very pleased with this. Uh, I'm just surprised that the honey was still, you know, fermented on even when it just sat at the bottom there. I know that that seems obvious, but for some reason I thought the honey would, honey would have a harder time or the yeast would have a harder time eating that honey if it wasn't mixed in. Now, here's my thing. Should you just be putting your honey into your container and then dumping your water on and letting it go? Uh, probably not because um, there are some downsides to doing this. It took longer to ferment for one. Um, I have a theory in my own brain that the these half gallon mason jars are actually slower fermenting than most other things for some reason um, because I feel like most other meads would not have taken a month um, in a different container but that's just a guess on my part. Um, the The biggest thing is that it just Frankly, it took a while to ferment. And if you want to make a product quickly, you probably want something that's mixed already so the yeast can go ahead and get going. Uh, there could have been some problems that arose with this having such a slow fermentation. If there's any back, bad bacteria um, that wanted to take over, uh, they could have more easily done that because the um, yeast hadn't take, taken hold. There was no alcohol content to protect. So that was a risk in this case. I would not suggest not mixing your honey at all. I would always mix my honey before I make a mead, but this was an interesting test. Flavor-wise, very, very similar. Um, I'm gonna revisit this test in the future. I'm gonna let these age for I don't know how long, and then I'll come back and do a taste test later on. But I wanted to share these results with you and hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's been really interesting to make. It took about a month to do, but um, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this. If you want to see any other tests I do, I do lots of tests like this. I make lots of meads. Um, I do lots of mead content in general. So this has been a lot of fun. Um, check out my other stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with some more content soon. And cheers.